That's actually lovely. So Monoprice sent me these. And um, I apologize for not putting them on the desk. This will have to do. Set down a bit up in front of this. I have a rolly table though. That's even more fun. These are the stage right. What is your model number? SV25. I guess that means you're a two-way and you have a five inch. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And it's a self-powered monitor. And it's not like an edifier where it's, you know, it comes remote control and you hook one speaker to the other and then it's easy and convenient in Bluetooth. No, 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 no. These are legit studio monitors. I already put away the T8Vs. Those are another legit studio monitor, which means each speaker gets power and each speaker gets signal and each speaker speaker has a volume control and several inputs that you get to. Actually, you don't get to switch between them on this one. It's just whatever it is plugged in, it uses. And then you get a main power switch on the back, which you're never going to shut them off because they don't get hot. And the front is a beautiful waveguide. Actually, like, legit, this is a very dense, hardened plastic, or, or at least a very nicely covered wood, which is nice because if the, on the JBL 305Ps, actually the 305Ps are the new ones, the LSRs, the older th JBL series, one of the mods that um, no audiophile would do is he would take the faceplate off and he'd backfill it with material so it wouldn't be hollow, so it wouldn't have a hollowish sound. So having the waveguides be solid is a matter. Like it does matter, and this is, I guess this is just coated wood. Um, you can easily cover this blue LED with your middle finger if you'd like to, or blue tack, or anything, because mm, it doesn't bother me that they're blue even. It bothers me that they're symmetrical. They're both on one side. Actually, it's asymmetrical. I'm getting ahead of myself now. So, these, how much do they cost, Yes, You know, I started this video and I didn't open up the website because I was just unprepared. I was ready, I, had, I found that clip, that annoyed, that was the um, converter resolution test um, with a dither, with no dither. And I'm like, this is it, I'm gonna start the video on this, it's gonna be sound lovely. It doesn't matter what these cost. I'm sure they're under $200, right, right? We're gonna go on that assumption. I am the worst reviewer and I apologize. And I'm getting that feeling on the back of my neck that I should stop this video. See, didn't you do, did, did, yeah, Monoprice sent it to me. Yeah, I agreed to review it. Shouldn't you know how much they cost? No. I prefer, and this is absolutely true, and this has nothing to do with these speakers in particular, but I prefer reviewing things or at least listening to them having no context of what, they, what their expense is. It just, it's so much more freeing. You want to know what it is. Like, if you listen to it, you could make the assumption of what the cost is going to be. But at the end of the day, it's like, how much is it worth to you? So I, personally, Zeo's Pantera, am going to guess. This is a fun game. Isn't this a fun game? If these are under 200 in, like, the 150 to $180 range, that works for me. That works for me. Maybe they're less. Maybe they're more. If there are more, we have some things to talk about because while these are self-powered monitors and there's plenty of self-powered monitors out there to buy, and ladies and gentlemen, there's no tone controls, there's no bass and treble controls in the back, but there are on other studio monitors and you don't get to switch between the different inputs. You have to have only one input at a time, which I feel like that no one's doing that. And they have a blue LED. So that's already giving them a negative point. So they're not exactly the most well-equipped, but and I'm not afraid to say this, these are probably the best sounding speakers Monoprice has ever sold. And Monoprice sold like some really nice speakers. Well, they sold some really acceptable speakers. I remember those ones with a little port that used to shoot things out of it. Those, no, these sound better than those. The big problem is these don't have any low end. Do not expect to get these and have them do anything below like 90 Hertz. Like I've had them up, I was using my living room, they were further apart. And I'm just listening to music and watching TV on it. And it's like, this sounds really good. Until something that you know is supposed to be like pounding, like percussive, percussive bit, nothing happens. And I can integrate the subwoofers with, you know, because I my whole system is magic here. I'm going to miss my magic system. My whole system is magic here, so I could add subwoofers out of, you know, a blink of an eye. A boom. There you go. It's my, hold on. I got to fix her. There we go. Why? Why, Mouse?
There we go. Okay. Let's, let's, can I yank one of these? Can I, can I grab and yank? They're very light. The box itself is also not a square, which I find interesting. Curved side, flat top, giving it a at least some semblance of like character as far as looks go. I like the completely clean fascia, except for that. If that was in the middle, I might even not even notice blue. Because it's one of those blues, it's like it's very blue, but it's not a flashlight. It's just a it's just blue. They could have gotten really good with it and like put it like here shining up at the driver or the tweeter. That would have been fucking spectacular, but they didn't do that. The tweeter is a soft dome behind a very thin metal mesh, which means if you push in this metal mesh, I, I'm real, I don't want to do it. Because if you do that, it's going to hit the driver and you're fucked. Very deep waveguide, which it still works on a desk, but it actually was doing a pretty good job projecting into the room for, for like sitting eight, ten feet back. So you get this very deep waveguide. Kevlar driver, five and a quarter. That tweeter, again, we can look at the back. No options. Volume. Oh, also, I gotta talk about the volume. Of course, I'm feeding this off of an SMS LM400 DAC, which is not a cheap DAC. And I've got FUBAR maxed out. The people always ask me, how should I set my volumes, Zio? So this is gonna sort of look like a hidden tutorial inside of this video. You always, want the last volume control to be the volume control you control. FUBAR up, if you had the option for this DAC, DAC up, controlling the speakers. However, powered monitors aren't exactly conducive to this theory as they're individually controlled. So you're, you're sort of screwed. You'd have to go and twist both knobs. So you go one step back and you control the source and you just set these. Now, this literally says min and max and the volume is somewhere in the middle. It doesn't say zero. Other speakers I was playing with have zero, at least marked. The T8Gs didn't have a delineation at zero, but it says this is zero. And if you went way past that, it was blasting. And if you went under that, it was a little low. These I didn't know. Usually I just put them up all the way, and this way you know they're at least even, like volume-wise, and then you adjust with this. But holy God, were they picking up sensitive. They were way oversensitive. So I just, I just want to point out that if you get these speakers, basically set them at noon and then work, start controlling. Because this is on 50 out of 80 and they're at like a good, they're like a good clip. If I turned it up all the way, it would basically bottom out the speaker. Like it would, it would be bad. So I'm presuming you're using these on your desk, right? Like in the living room here, th there's other choices. I went on and on and on about the T8V and how that's like the living room speaker, but you'll never get away with it because it's only slightly smaller than my heresy and not even nearly as pretty. So these don't work in the living room because you can't add a sub. There's ways around that. <clears throat> you could get a DAC like this. DAC has XLR and RCA outputs. SMSL SU8, link in the description, is probably I'd still probably pick that over the SMS LM200, but any DAC amp that has a remote control lets you raise and lower the volume of it, which was actually, this is the remote control for that. If it has XLR outputs and RCA outputs, that's easy to add a sub. XLR to the speaker, RCA to the sub, you balance the speakers and sub with their volume controls respectively, you control the DAC, you're good. You can add a sub to any living room. The other, other way to do it is to get the um, mini DSP HD and then you could also just add a remote control functionality for that for volume. You won't have any visual reference, but then you could do some really funky stuff where you take the low end away from the drivers, give it just to the sub, and then you have an actually balanced setup and you could do all sorts of room corrections with that on top of it. Don't know if you wanna go that route. It's still got a decent enough DAC, especially for living room duties. That's just, that's like more like gaining a hobby of mini DSP HD and not just get me get a sub real quick. You have to sort of like know what you're doing. But these are more gonna be for a desk speaker. And I'm still gonna say you need a sub. So we're back to that same fucking thing what I just described, you still need a sub. You could absolutely get away with using them as their role, as studio monitors. They're not, they're not colored. This is the first monoprice speaker that doesn't feel like someone was just like, I don't know, 
turn up the bass and then turn off the mid-range because we don't fucking want that. These sound pleasant. Well, that's not a good song. <laughs> They image really well too. They are like, like that tweeter, as much as it is like bare, I'm sitting way too high, number one. My eye, my eye level is here, and the speaker's down here because I'm sitting on a fucking coffee table. An Ikea coffee table, by the way. Love these. Um, and it's still imaging beautifully. And it's got some depth. It actually has that depth that I like from like the Atom stuff. The only thing this is missing is low end because... <laughs> And you can't boost it. That's another thing. If you've got the Mini DSP HD, you could legitimately boost the low end of these. I mean, but then you're getting that to probably add a sub and then you'd have no problem. These feel like an incomplete 2.1. For their job of sitting there and spelling music to you at a very neutral, plain, it's, they're great. They are fucking great at it. You just, you don't know what the low end's doing. So if you're actually doing mixing, you're gonna be like, I think it needs more bass. And you're gonna keep turning it up in your mix until you hear it, and by the time that music that you're producing gets onto someone else's setup that has giant subwoofers, everyone's gonna die. So I'm just warning you, the problem with getting a, a, a weak area set of studio monitors, because this is gonna do depth and vocals, perfect. They're perfect sounding. They compete at least with JBLs and Adams and as far as what's going on from like here up, great. Fucking surprise, surprise, Mono Price did something amazing. But the problem with getting small ones, and the reason why Gentle X can, that's the reason why the, the iLoud MTMs could roll down to like 30 hertz, but not at any volume, is because you need to know. That shit you need to know if you're using these professionally. If you are editing your own videos, Like there's like booms. This is Dragon Age Inquisition. Booms, and there's no boom. There's just like the sound of a boom, but there's no boom. So you, you could monitor with these, but you're gonna wanna finalize on a set of headphones. Or you're gonna wanna add a sub, or you're gonna wanna just get something bigger. That's basically what it comes down to. So are these a failure in that case? Mm, not really. I would love to try a bigger version of these, something with like a six and a half. I mean, five. they went for a very, very small. The hell is that? El Camino. They went for a very small size, which I mean, these are only slightly bigger than like Mike MB42s. They're using a bigger driver, and they do have a, a base port, but it's just, it also could be because they're floating in the middle of my room here. And usually with a speaker set up like this, you're gonna want them closer to get a little more room reflections to increase the low end. But they shouldn't be reliant on that. People who have desks like, I mean, granted, this is the greatest desk ever. You know, where you have a floating imaginary keyboard and you sit on a table. It's good for your spine. <sighs> your zen with your 50 inch television. That's been a 50 inch 1080p television all this time, by the way. Start pulling out little pieces of knowledge like that. Why does every song I have start for like 30 seconds? Yeah, that horn is great. I don't want to keep going. I'm going to get just copyrights. Let's put it up. Sounds good. Chewbacca, you hearing this shit? You need your medicine. You're getting your medicines today. Because you're all scruff scruff. Um, they sound really good. They sound really good until you get to a song that you know has low and it doesn't have it. But as far as everything else goes, they show up, they turn on, they make sound. Look at her. She looks like poop. Why do you look like poop again? It's not that bad out. All right, I'm gonna be finished with this because she needs her medicine and I'm gonna forget it unless I do it right now, right? You love taking your medicine because it's the flavor of like children's chewables. I don't know why they don't make cat medicine like fish flavored. Like there's enough cats that need Clavamox that you could just make a certain type of Clavamox with like krill oil in it. And then she'd be like, I want my medicine. Um, 
links to these, um, links to a couple other cheap, whatever the price is. Remember, we don't know what the price is. If these are under $200, you're not going to really find much because even JBLs in their best day are $200, usually $250. And the Atoms are $400. But both of those can pull out the low end to make them like function. I think Monoprice did well on these. I'd like to see something bigger in this lineup. Sound demo in the description. Sound demo will come out tomorrow. That wallpaper in the description. Ooh, she's laying down. Look at her. Oh, she's just sleepy buttons. All wallpapers in all descriptions of all videos. Um, if you want to support this channel, help me rebuild this room somewhere else. Um, Patreon and Subscribestar exist. And the benefits of joining those for $5 a month are see these reviews early, ask me any questions you want on platform, and participate in the yard sales. I'm pretty sure the amount of price usually gets their stuff back from me. I'll see. If they don't want these back, these will be in the yard sale. That M400 might be in the yard sale, although it's very convenient to have. It has a nice clear to re clear reading screen. It's glass on top, so you can do coke off of it. Um, so those are the three $5 tier benefits. The $10 tier gets you into a private behind the scenes Telegram chat, which if you've never used Telegram, you're missing out. It's where I get all my wallpapers from, basically. But um, if you don't use Telegram, that's there's like 200 plus people in there, all as helpful as I am, except they're gonna empty your wallets, so that's the greatest place on earth, and that's where I am the most of the time. Like, if I ask me a question on Patreon, it may take me up to a week to get back to you, because lots of questions. But on Telegram, it's on my phone. I'm just wandering around, oh, there. Hey, I do this with my voice. Um, anything else? Chewbacca, anything else? What a sleepy boons. I'm going to go make pesto chicken and feed her some, because that's what I think she needs in her life. You had filet mignon, you bitch. I love her. I gave her some filet mignon. I bought it at Costco, it was on sale. Um, just thought everyone needed to know that my cat has eaten filet mignon. And then she walked away from another piece of it, so she just was like, fuck this, this is too low. She wants only caviar. Uh, that's it, Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forums. I should mention those earlier on because I want those places to be more popular, although they're pretty goddamn busy as it is. But uh, every one of the items that I've reviewed should have a dedicated post. At least any of the items I've reviewed since the site launched should have a dedicated post, official post, for everyone to post their comments and explanations and their reviews. It's great. And I'm going to go now. I'm going to do sound demos.